there everyone, and welcome to Let's Play The Legend of Dragoon. Well, this is actually my second take at this, because my computer decided to randomly shut down on me while I was recording before. Um, it's been doing that for a few months. I have not been able to diagnose what the problem is. Might have to get it repaired one of these days. But anyway, that's besides the point. You know, I I'm actually going to say this. Um, starting with this game, I'm actually going to go back to my older way of recording videos where I'm just recording like one um, like, like one segment, like one video at a time. Uh, most videos will probably be between 25 to 35 minutes, maybe a little longer or shorter. Honestly, I don't really want to go that far above 30. I think 35 might be like the upper limit. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go back to recording like single segment um, sessions. The, I mean, like single video sessions. I mean, sometimes the video it might be it might be two videos if I'm recording like the final boss and ending or something. That obviously all be done in one take. I might split them up then, but I think for the most, you know, yeah, most things are just going to be like single video recordings. One of the reasons is because of that, but yeah, honestly, you know, I I, I think that um. It'd be better that way anyway, because that would help me, you know, stay motivated in editing them. Because I'm getting tired of having to edit, like, two to three hour, you know, audio tracks and video clips at this point. I I'm really just wanting to go back to my old way of recording. But anyway, yeah, let's let's not waste too much time um, blabbering on about that. So, The Legend of Dragoon is one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It's easily one of my favorite PlayStation games, and I've been wanting to do this game for a really long time. I really should have gotten to it sooner. Also, this is a game that I actually did on my old channel. I, I mean, like, my very, very first channel, way back in, like, 2009, 2010. I don't know when it was I played this game before, but yeah, it's been a long time since I've played this game for YouTube, so let's get right into it. You know, I gotta say, this game's FMVs are very impressive. Um, actually, yeah, it's like, visually and graphically, Legend of Dragoon, 
I think it probably has some of the best visuals on the PlayStation 1. And I don't just mean, like, from a realistic standpoint. I mean, like, I really like the art style, too. Like, look at that beautiful scenery there. Like, this game has some of my favorite um, pre-rendered backgrounds and backdrops of any PlayStation game. You know, I always thought that thing looked more like a giant praying mantis than a dragon. If you can't really tell what it looks like from there, well, don't worry. We're going to see it up close pretty soon. Yeah, Chapter 1, Thirty in War. Um, this game has four chapters. Guess how many discs it has. <laughs> yeah, it's one chapter per disc. It's a four-disc long game. It's going to be a long journey. Well, considering the chapter's called Surty and War Dart, I don't think it's just a rumor. It's gonna happen. There's your first boss dart. Kill it. Yeah, actually, no. We we cannot kill this thing right now. We have to run. Granted, this is all a cutscene. This is automatic. Seriously, though. I mean, they say that thing's a dragon, but... It looks like a giant insect to me. It does not look like a dragon. It's like a giant praying mantis monster insect thing. I, I don't know. It don't look like a freaking dragon. why it's slamming its head against the mountain. Maybe it's trying to cause a rock slide to kill us or something. No, it was a giant bug. Yeah, prepare for double exclamation marks all throughout this game. <laughs> this game loves using double exclamation marks. Actually, a lot of the punctuation and uh, wording in this game can be a little odd sounding sometimes. A lot of people criticize this game for its translation or writing, but honestly, I don't really think it's that bad. I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's a questionable translation, but like, I don't think it's that hard to understand, though. Like, I think for a lot of people, it makes the story difficult to understand from certain parts or aspects of it. But, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't really have any trouble understanding it. I mean, you might have to think about some things a little bit, but I don't think it's really that difficult to understand. Also, every time I see characters shouting with, like, double exclamation marks in this game, I always imagine that they're sound, they, they sound like, um... I don't know, you know, you know, like those old, like, m like,
kung fu um chinese kung fu movies that got like brought over into english you know how they have like the exaggerated acting and voicing and well just, just think of anything with like really exaggerated and really like cheesy voicing and that, that's how i imagine a lot of the dialogue in this game actually sounding Plus, there actually are some voice-acted FMVs, you know, like the opening, and... Well, the voice-acting in this game is... Well, it, it's something. I'm not gonna say it's good, but it's... It's something. It, it's honestly, it's a so-bad-it's-good kind of thing, really. Anyway, here we have our very first battle. Now, let me explain how the battles go. This is obviously the escape option, but we can't escape, because this is a scripted battle. Um... Healing potions will heal um, half of your maximum hit points. Burnouts here, now these are an attack item. See, characters in this game don't have magic, but you can attack um, by using these magic items. This is a flame item. Um, guard obviously cuts damage in half, but it also heals 10% of your maximum HP. And um, the Knight of Sandor, well, Knight of Sandor, yeah, that's the enemy of the name. <sighs> the enemy of the name, what? Why can't I talk? That's the enemy's name, but, um, notice the color of the enemy's, um, name box. It's red. That means that these guys are fire element. Dart's also fire elemental. There's, um, seven elements in this game. There's, um, fire, water, wind, earth, light, darkness, and thunder. And there's also a non-elemental color. It's just, like, white, um... Yeah, red is fire, green is wind, um, light blue is water, dark blue is darkness, yellow is light, brown is earth, and um, yeah, purple is thunder, and white is non-elemental. And these four, you know, these elements obviously oppose one another, but it's not like Pokemon, no. Um, <laughs> um, water enemies are not strong against, like, fire attacks. Actually, the, 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 it goes both ways. Like, the elements all oppose one another. Like, um, you know, like, earth is weak to wind, but wind is also weak to earth, so, yeah. However, Thunder, oddly enough, has no weakness. It's kind of weird that the Thunder element's even in this game, because it literally has no opposite and no weakness. Yeah, unfortunately, we were too late to save these people. Ah! Also, that glowing thing right there is a save point. But we're not going to use that right now. I kind of just want to get this first episode done right now because, yeah, it kind of sucks that I have to re-record this. <laughs> Bet he knows.
Oh yeah, just try it. So yeah, here we have our first boss fight, and, well, it's easy. Also, I didn't explain anything about this before, but you might um, notice that when you attack, there's like a little circle that um, homes in on the enemy. Um, basically, you have to press the X button as soon as the, uh, not circle, but like a square. Like, the little squares will home in on the central square, and you have to, yeah, you have to press the button to time your hit. It's called the Addition System, and it's what really makes the Legend of Dragoon stand out as far as combat goes. It, it, it makes it unique from most other PS1 JRPGs. It kind of makes it, it, it's kind of like a blend of action RPG and turn-based RPG, really. Characters' first editions are really easy to perform because they only have one hit, but... Um, they do get quite a bit more complex later. I'd also like to note that I really like the boss music. This game has a pretty good soundtrack overall. And then we learned our second edition, Volcano. Our journey's only just begun. Now, before we move on... I am going to check something here. The additions. Now this here is your character's additions. Um, you you can select. See if we select volcano now. Now um, Dart will do volcano in battle instead of double slash. But you might notice the additions have levels. See it says next level seven out of twenty for double slash. That means you have to get at least twenty successful uses for it to level up to the next level. And every twenty levels they will gain a level. So the maximum level is five. Because, see, there is no 100. The highest it can go is 99. So when it hits 80 successful uses, that will max out the addition. And what I always do is I always stick with one addition until I max it out, and then I start working on the next one. And if I do it like that, then by the time I reach the end of the game, I tend to have nearly maxed out additions for my preferred party. And on that note, um, my preferred party in this game might not necessarily be one that most people agree with. I know a lot of Legend of Dragoon players um, like to use a certain speedy little magic nuker um, that we get later on in the game, on Disc 2 specifically, and while I do think she's an awesome character, I don't I don't usually really use her in battle, because, you know, I'll admit, after watching... Um, H.C. Bailey's playthrough, he made me realize something. Speed in this game is very, very important. And, well, I also learned just how overpowered um, magic attack items can be in this game if you use them with her and her high speed, because, like, I never realized just how overpowered you could make the, um the um, magic attack items in this game. Like, you can kill bosses in, like, two or three minutes tops by just nuking them with ultra-powerful magic. And with her speed, she can get, like, a lot of turns, but... Yeah, I, I was never really a magic user in this game. I, I, I always um, put more focus on the additions than the magic, and... That's, that's what I'm still going to be doing. Like, even though I've, you know, realized that there's, like, a much quicker, much, um... I guess, more efficient way of getting through bosses. I'm not really going to be utilizing that. I'm just going to be playing this game like I always played it. I'm going to be mostly focusing on additions and, you know, using the characters with high attack power, because that's how I usually play RPGs. I tend to go with, like, the physical attackers. I'm I'm usually a more of a physical-oriented player. 
as opposed to magical oriented when it comes to these types of games. And I'm not sure why I'm going over there. I was I was thinking of the chest, I think. Yeah, actually I was. I was thinking like, hey, did I open that chest? But yeah, I actually did open it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Legend of Dra Dragoon players are gonna be like, oh, you're not gonna use her, but she's the best character in the game. Yeah, well, she's just, I just never really use her because her physical attack power just isn't that high. And even though her final attack, um, her final addition has like a ridiculous multiplier, um. She's just not as physically strong as a lot of the other characters in the game, and I just have a preferred party that I'm used to using and that I want to stick with. Now, I will use her some, but I just mean, like, you know, I'm probably going to use all the characters some just to show what they can do and what they're like in battle, but, you know, I'm not going... She's not going to be, like, a mainstay in my party. But yeah, I didn't realize until um, watching H.C. Bailey's run just how important speed in this game actually is. Because I never really, um, I never really prioritized um, speed very much in the Legend of Dragoon. I, I, I just never really thought about it much because, like, I never really thought about, um, you know, how effective the stat was because your speed doesn't really. I don't think your speed really increases with your level. I think the only way to get more speed on a character is by equipping speed enhancing, um, yeah, speed enhancing equipment on them. And I never really use that because I usually use the equipment that gives me like the highest attack power and stuff. Also, the only reason that I'm um, doing this little tutorial is I want to show this thing about counterattacking. Also, you're going to um, you're going to see volcano here because I I think it yeah I'm just showing this because I hadn't explained about it yet but yeah see sometimes um, enemies on on multi hit editions enemies will attempt to counter attack you so you have to press circle instead of square like that and this is volcano by the way <laughs> volcano. Uh, yeah, that's definitely enough. Anyway, yes, I can. Yes, I recognize that that certain character definitely is the best character in the game for dealing damage throughout the majority of everything. Because, um, yeah, she's really, really strong, like magic-wise. But I don't know. That's that's just that's just that was just never how I played this game. So I'm going to be sticking with how I play the Legend of Dragoon. Also, um, yeah, we got it. Um, the Stardust that I picked up from here, um, the Stardust is a collectible item. There's 50 total in the game, and you give them to a certain character, and she will give you rewards for every 10 Stardust that you collect. And if you get all 50 of them, you'll be able to pretty much take on the ultimate challenge in the game. But, yeah... Uh, we won't be able to get all of them until disc four, so that's a long ways off. Anyway, I won't be saying what my preferred party is, because that would involve me spoiling upcoming characters, but... Yeah. Anyway, I do believe I've gotten all the, um... beginning explanations out of the way. See, was there anything I forgot to explain about the battle system? Oh yeah, actually, there is one more thing I'd like to say before I end this video. Um, in the battle, you'll notice, like, like when you target the enemy, there will be like a blue um, diamond above their head, and well, it's more like a triangle, but yeah, it's like a blue um, thing above their head. Um, well, that indicates their HP. See, if it's blue, it means they're above 50%. HP, but if it's yellow, that means they are between 25% and 50%, and if it's red, that means they're below 25% HP remaining. So you can tell how close you are to defeating an enemy, and particularly a boss. Also, Frugal here is a jerk. So he just 
knocks people off to their death, just casually. And here's the world map. If we zoom out here, you can see the entire continent of Indinus, which is, yeah, Indinus is the name of the continent in this game. Although sometimes, I don't know, sometimes I think the game makes it sound like it's also the name of their entire planet or something, but they call it the Continent of Endedness, and don't think that um, we're going to be going to every single location you see on the map here, because, yeah, there's some parts of the map we never actually visit, unfortunately. If they ever remade The Legend of Dragoon, I'd really like for everything to be explorable, for us to be able to go to all the places that we're never actually able to visit in the game. Also, if you um, walk up to a location and press square, you can see what's in here. It lists, like, save with, if there's a save point, an item shop, or weapon shop, or an inn, or things like that. And you can see, um, Celis has a saving point, but yeah. Anyway, here is the first dungeon of the game, the forest, but we're going to end this episode right here. So I'm going to save. There is one more thing about the battles that I haven't explained, which is actually the attack, um, the, the magic attack items. But, yeah, uh, next episode, we'll get into those. So, see y'all next time when we head into the forest!